Welcome to Eclectic Images and Crafting with Kathy. In today's video, we're going to be colouring one of our favourite ladies, Greta, with some metallic watercolours. Now there's different products you can use for metallic watercolours. This is our card that we're going to be creating. So we'll be doing the background as well as colouring in Greta. Now some of the different products you can use for watercolouring for this sort of technique. I'm using Collider Colour inks as my base colour and then adding to that Perfect Pearls powders to give me the metallic shine. Now Perfect Pearls powders can be purchased from us individually or I do do them as a set of five. Now I've teamed in this set, I've teamed the new colours, Zinnia, Iris, Blue Hydrangea, Poppy and I've teamed that with one of my all time favourites, Sunflower Sparkle. Now we do also have metallic watercolours in paint sets because some people prefer to work with a paint rather than a loose powder. So we have the options of both. Once, uh, this is made by the Colour Blast, which is an Australian company. So we have a set that is different golds and a set that's colours with a white gold as well. So they're lovely to work with too. Some of the advantages of working with the um, Perfect Pearls though is that you can do other things with them as well as paint with them. They can be used, you can stamp an image on dark cardstock and then brush the pearls over the top and I've got a sample of that just to show how they come up on the dark cardstock so you can see there's different colours in this pack and how gorgeous they are on dark. So that's just brushed over an image that was stamped with Versamark ink. The other thing that you can do is you can make your own metallic mist sprays. So this is where I've put Sunflower Sparkle in a mister bottle and just added water to it. For a full bottle of water I would add uh, about four little scoops on the end of an ice cream stick, scoops of powder, give it a good shake and you've got a magnificent metallic spray. So I'll be using one of those today as well. Okay, so the colours we're going to work with for Greta today is off the Spectrum pad I'm going to use the green. So we're using the Collider Colour Spectrum and I'll be using the green and mixing that with the Perfect Pearls Zinnia. Okay, let's go. So I've already stamped Greta with Versamark ink and embossed her in black powder. So she's ready to go. Now with the Zinnia, just take your lid off and with a dry brush, just put a little bit onto your palette. So the palette is just an acrylic block and you can see you use very little of your product. So on the acrylic block, I've also taken the Collider Colour Pad and pressed it down the side of the block. So this gives me my paint palette and now it's got my metallic added to it as well. Just pop those colours out of the way for now. Okay, so we're working with the Zinnia. I'm working with my Aquash water brush pens. Um, I've got the medium, the fine and the broad. I'll be working mainly with the medium and the finer tips. Okay, so to start with our painting, what I'm going to do is load up with just the metallic Zinnia. This is another thing with using the powders is you can control more how much metallic you add. So I'm going to paint some of that on. And of course it doesn't look like much is happening to start with. The metallics do show up more as the paint, as the colours dry. Now I'm picking up some of the green and popping that in there where I want there to be deeper colour. Then I'm just going to use my brush that has the pearl loaded on it and just drag that colour into the area that had just the pearl. You can see how easy it is to blend and we've naturally given ourselves a highlight going into a deeper colour. So I'm just going to repeat that on various areas of the jacket. So we'll grab the pearl on our brush and by using the two brushes it means I'm not having to wash the pearl off the brush each time to wash colour out of it, which means we're actually saving product. Pop some green ink in there. And just blend it out. If you blend too much colour up, you can just move it away with your brush. Or you can drag it out if you'd like it to be a little bit more. Okay, now on her jacket, I'm looking at the front part of the jacket being the lighter side and there being a shadow where those buttons cross. So for my front part of the jacket, I'm going to start off with metallic on that part there. Add my deeper colour to where I feel there would be a shadow on the jacket and blend the two together. Now 
Okay, on the other side of the jacket, I feel that the, um, doesn't help when you dip your brush into the wrong bit of color. I'll go back to adding just pearl onto this one. So I'll color the jacket with the pearl. Now I feel on this one there's going to be a shadow where the button layer is overlapping as well as where the jacket finishes, the line of the jacket finishes under her arm. So I'm just going to put a bit of green on both sides. And then blend between those colors. Again, if I want that to be a little bit lighter, I could add some more pearl and move those colors around. But I'm actually quite happy with that just the way it is. So I'm going to keep going. Let's do a hat. So we'll add the pearls first. Then come in with our green. And then back to our medium brush to blend. You can see how good it is to work with the two brushes. That I'm not having to stop and change, um, rinse the brush out to change colors. I can just be adding pearl with one and color with the other. So now we'll just go with some straight green on her sleeves because I want those to be looking more shadowed and in the background. And you'll notice I just keep turning my card around so that I'm using the tip of the brush up against that embossing line. By embossing the image first, it does mean that you're less likely to go over your edges. But if you also work with the tip of the brush going in towards those edges, that also helps you to stay within your lines. However, if we did go outside of our edge, like there, what I would do is grab a clean brush. Now I'm going to use my broad one for this just because I know it's clean. So grab a clean brush and just move the colour. So you can see I'm cleaning my brush off each time until I've moved that colour back into the rest of my painting. That's not the end of the world if you happen to go outside your edges. Okay, let's keep going. Now where I'm, I'm going to come back to the, the really deep shadows last. So we're going to move on to the skirt next. Now with something like the skirt, it's quite a large area, which means our colours are more likely to grab and have trouble blending. So I'm just going to lay down a little bit of water with my broad brush. Then come in again with our metallic and pop metallic over all of that. Now we could also be mixing the metallic with the, the ink on our broad brush, but I'm finding it's just as easy just to keep one for colour and one for metallic. So now once we start adding our green in here, because the card's already damp, it's going to blend out really easily for us. So I'm just going to go across that a little bit. I do find painting with inks a very easy form of watercolouring. They just seem to blend so easily for you. Now I've got a little bit, I'm just noticing a bit of green up here is snuck onto her jacket from the sleeve. So I'm just, see how easy that is, just to push a bit of colour away. Okay, now I'm going to grab some more colour. Add a shadow line down the back of the skirt. Blend it out to our metallics. And you notice as soon as you touch it, it starts to blend out for you. So if I wanted more colour, I can drag it across. If I want less, I push back into it. Okay, I might put a little bit more colour down the bottom of the skirt as well. And then we need to do our shoes. Now I've already done some other samples with some of the other colours, so I'll show you those at the end. Just so you can see how well these metallic powders work with all the different colours on the Spectrum pad. And of course, the same metallic colours are going to work beautifully with other Collider colour pads as well. So you can see just how many different colour combinations you're going to get by just mixing your metallics in with your Collider colour inks or your Catherine Pooler inks. Both are lovely water reactive, water soluble inks, so our colours will, our metallics will mix in really well with those as well. You would just tap the ink pad onto the acrylic block the same as I've done with the Collider colour ink. Okay, I'm just going to add some flesh tones in now. So I'm going to give my brushes a clean. I'm just going to rinse them out with some water. And just wipe them out on my scrap pad to make sure that's nice and clean. And it is. Now I'm going to use the orange, but I'm going to really wash it out quite pale. So I'm picking up a bit of colour from the block and smoothing it out till I've got very little colour on my brush. Now. I'm working with the medium brush, even though I'm doing small areas, but you'll see why in a moment. Let's start here now. See, that's still a little bit orangey. So I'm just going to wipe my brush out a bit. 
as we get it more just a flesh tone. To me, that's still a little bit much. I'm going to wipe a brush out more and just push that back a little bit till we get it a little bit softer. That's better. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of pink on the small brush, tiny amount, and I actually don't want my brush too wet or it'll bleed too much. So I'm just going to push that back a little bit, just giving her a bit of blush, which gives her a little bit of warmth. Now with the flesh tone, don't forget, with her hands, you could colour those in uh, with a colour to be gloves, or you can colour them in with orange to be more of a flesh colour. Again, just taking a bit of that colour off so it's not too strong. And don't forget her legs as well. And the top of that foot. Okay, now the other area that we need to do is our deeper hollows. So the, the darker areas. To do this, I'm actually going to mix some of the green that I was working with, with some of the dark blue. So it's going to create a, a much deeper green. I'm going to add a little bit more blue in there. So in underneath the jacket, in underneath the skirt. I'm just checking if I any other hollows I need to do. No, I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so there we have her fully painted. Now we're going to create a background card to go with her. So using the same colours on a fresh piece of cotton blend. Now working on cotton blend cardstock as I usually do when I'm doing water colouring because it can cope with having a lot of water used on it without buckling. Um, sometimes it does buckle a bit if I add a lot of water to it, but it can be smoothed out again. But it doesn't peel and bore and you can do lots of blending on it. So to do my background, I'm going to use the Spectrum ink patterns again. And this time, I'm going to use it with one of my big brushes. So grab some of the green and we're going to smear around the card and I'm really not fussed how even the colour is. I'm just wanting to get some colour on. I don't mind because I'm going to be putting water over this and blending it. I don't mind if this is quite ragged. Just stomp some colour in there. just going to move my notepad out there so I've just got my craft mat and then I can do lots of spritzing of water. Now, but what I'm going to use instead of water, I'm actually going to use a spray mist that I've made with the Zinnia in a mister bottle. So I'll give that a good shake and spritz it on. And that colour is going to move, smooshing together make a fabulous background. I'm going to give it a few moments just to sit there. Now actually that has come up really nicely just like that. So we could just leave that to dry or I can use a paper towel and just lift a bit of that moisture off and that's going to actually lift up a little bit of colour. Now let's dry off our craft mat and I'm going to go with the heat gun for just a few minutes so I can dry this off. You could use your heat gun or you could just leave it to sit and dry naturally. Often when you've been doing things like this where you're using a lot of water, it would be a good idea to leave it, once it's dry, sit it under a heavy book overnight, flatten it back down again before you start mounting your layers together. Now I'm loving the patterns that this is creating. I can just see how it's forming as it dries. A little bit of a dry from the back as well. So we're getting a little bit of buckling. Some of that will smooth as we dry it. Okay. I'm 
Now we could leave that just on a fairly light background without adding any extra color to our card or like in our sample card, we could actually shade around the edge quite softly, which I'm going to do that just to show you how to do it. So you can shade it and then I've given it a light cream border. So we're just gonna shade the green one. So it's using the same blending brush, but instead of with, whereas with the background I did it quite rough, here I want to actually do it nice and soft. And this you can do really easily with one of these blending brushes. So just either circles or just a smudging. But you can see this time, whereas with the background, I was just going directly onto the card. With this one, I'm using it off the edge of the card a bit so that we're just smudging a soft amount onto our card. Now I only ever ink the very end of the brush and that way you've got the clean bristles of the brush do help with some of your blending and softening. It's up to you how much you add. And whether you keep it just to the edges or whether you, as you've got less on your brush, you can shade it in gently a little bit more towards her. Okay, so by adding that soft color around, you can now see on this one where having the white, the creamy color border really lifts out our main piece. Now I've also, once the paints had fully dried on my purple version, I've added a bit of glossy accents to her jacket, her hat and her shoes, which just gives those that little bit extra lift as well. You could use some stickles, uh, we could decorate the buttons with liquid pearls or gems, so much more you could do with it. But as you can see, this is just as it is, makes a beautiful card. You can see that shine starting to come through as the colors dry. And I'm going to show you a few other options in colors. Now this is just using the pearl powders that I've shown you and the Spectrum Collider Color inks. So you can imagine with the multitudes of ink colors that you've got between the Catherine Pooler inks and the Collider Color inks, you can just see how much variety you can get even with just your five pearls colors. Okay, so we've got uh, an orange one as well and a blue one. So that goes through showing you some of the different shades that you could do. There's also a, a pink on the pad that I haven't done yet. I'll have to play with that one later. Um, the other thing that we could do with this one, if we wanted to not layer it up with the extra card, we could just very carefully swipe the edge of the card along our pad to create a darker border. And this will help it stand out from the background piece. So I'm just laying it over, swiping it across the pad. Okay, so now when we pop that down on our background, you'll see it stands out a little bit more because it's got that darker edge to it. So that just shows you some of the variations that you can get. Um, as I said, with the pearls colours, you can make your own sprays. You can use them on dark cardstock as well. You can add them to all sorts of different mediums to paint with them. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for watching. And we'll see you again for another clip where we'll do some more watercolouring later on. Okay. Thanks. Bye.